Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. In today's video, we're going to create your very first game, which is going to be incredibly simple to put together and have near infinite possibilities of things that you can do with it. Also, if it's your first time at the channel, make sure to subscribe for more videos where I simplify the web for you. Let's get started now. Let's first take a look at what we're going to build, which is this simple text adventure game over here. As you can see, we have some text and some options. For example, let's leave the goo behind, and now we get more text and more options. But this isn't a very simple text adventure game. If I refresh here and actually take the goo, you see we get different options. So this game actually has state built into it, which you can use to determine the path that your different text nodes can take for you. So let's get started building this now. First, we need to create an index.html page, which is where all of our HTML for the game is going to go. We're also going to want a style sheet for styling our pages, as well as lastly, a game.js, which is going to store all of our code for the JavaScript for our game, which is the bulk of this video. Let's set up our index.html here by just hitting exclamation point and enter, and that'll generate the boilerplate for us. We can just call this text adventure. And inside of here, we're just going to need the basic code to create our container, which is going to contain our question here, our text, as well as our different options. So let's first here create a div with the class of container, just like this. And inside of here, we're going to need a div, which is going to have an ID, which is text. And it's just going to contain our text. This is going to be this first section up here. And then we're going to need another container, which is going to be a div with the ID here. And it's going to be option option buttons, because these are all of our different op option buttons are going to be stored in here. And this is going to have a class as well, which is just going to be button grid, because we're going to have a grid of buttons down here, as you can see. And inside of here, we're going to have all of our different options, which are just buttons with a class here of button. And we can just say option one, copy that down multiple times. So we're going to have option two, three, and four. Now let's open that up real quick using live server. Make sure it's saved. And as you can see, we get our text and our four different options. Now let's work on styling it so we have that card system. We go over to our styles, and the very first thing we want to do is something that I do in every single one of my projects, which is just set up border box properly. So we can just come in here, select all of our attributes before and after, and we just want to set the box sizing right here, whoops, box sizing to be border box, which will just make styling our widths and heights and padding and margin much easier. Also, I have the font Gotham rounded on my computer, which I like to use in all my videos, and you can use whatever font here you want or just the default. There we go. If we save that, make sure that we actually are linking that style sheet. So we can come in here. We can just say link href is going to be equal to styles.css. And we want to make sure we tell it that it is going to be a style sheet just like that. Oops. There we go. Now, if we save that, you see our font is being applied. Let's also link in here our script tag while we're at it. So we can just say defer. And we want to set the source here, which is equal to game.js and close that off. Now, inside of our styles here, let's work on styling our body first. So we want to have everything in the center of our screen. So we're just going to set padding here to zero and margin to zero so that we can get our background color properly. And then we're going to use display flex combined with justify content in the center and align items in the center, which is going to center our content in the screen. But if we save that, you'll see it's not centering it vertically. So what we need to do is first set the width here to be 100 view width. So it's going to take up the entire width. And we also need to do the same thing with height. We just want to set that equal to 100 view height. Now when we save that, you see our content is centered in the center of our screen. Last thing we need to do here is just take our background color. I just want to set it to a nice dark gray. So we'll just use 333, which gives us that nice gray color that we can see on our screen over here. Now the next thing we need to do is work on styling our container. So let's select that. And the container here is just going to have a width. We're going to set that to 800 pixels. Whoops, 800 pixels. And we're also going to set a max width, which is going to be 80%. This is just so it never expands too far on our screen. And as you can see, it now only takes up 80% of our screen instead of the entire thing. Now we can set the background color. We're just going to set that equal to white. We're also going to set some padding of 10 pixels, as well as we want to make our corners a little bit rounded. So we're going to set a border radius, which is just going to be here of five pixels. Now you can save that. We see this is working well, but we want to add a little bit of a box shadow around our object to make it pop. So to do that, we'll use box shadow. And we're going to set this here, our X offset to zero, our Y offset to zero, our spread to 10 pixels. So it gives us this nice spread out effect. And then we're going to set or our blur. Sorry, this is our blur. And then lastly, our spread is going to be two pixels. So we get a nice little black line around it, as you can see here. The last thing we have left to do is style our buttons. Let's select our button grid, just like this. And inside of our button grid, what we want to do is we want to make it a display of grid. And we want to make it so it's two columns. So we're going to use grid template columns for that. And here we go, we can set we want a repeat of two, and we want them to be auto sized. So we're just going to put auto here, whoops, auto, 
If we save that, you see we now get a two column layout and we're gonna put a little bit of gap between them of 10 pixels, let's say, as well as we wanna set a margin on the top of 20 pixels. Now, if we save that, you see it's spaced out from our text up here, as well as spaced out between all of our individual buttons. Now we can move on to styling our individual buttons. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put a background color on all these different buttons. And we're gonna use HSL for that, a hue of 200. We're gonna have a saturation here of 100%, and we want a lightness of 50%. This is just gonna be a nice blue color, as you can see. Let's copy that down. And we're going to do the same exact thing, but this is going to be for our border. So we're going to do a one pixel solid border, and instead of doing 50% lightness, we're going to do 30%, so it's a little bit of a darker blue color around, as you can see. Now we can assign the border radius. This is just going to be five pixels, whoops, five pixels, just like that. And we're also going to put a little bit of padding. We'll say five pixels and 10 pixels, change the color of the text to white, and we're going to lastly remove the outline. So we'll say outline of none. Now, as you can see, our buttons are looking a lot nicer. Lastly, let's just add a simple hover effect, just like this, and we're just gonna change the border color. And we're gonna change it to black. Now, when we hover over it, we can tell which button we're hovering on based on that border color. Now, we can finally jump into the fun part of the application, which is gonna be coding the entire game. The first thing we need to do is we need to select both our text element, which is this text here that we have. So we can just say that that's gonna be equal to document.getElementById of text, which we set inside of our index.html here. And the next thing is we want the options button container. So let's just do the exact same thing. Const option buttons. And this is just gonna be equal to here, document.getElementById of option buttons. And let's make sure we call this option buttons element so we know that this is an actual element in our application. And now our application is going to have a few different steps. The first thing is we're gonna have a function for starting the game. So we're just gonna say start game, whoops, start game. And this is going to start up our game and set all of our state and application to where it needs to be. We're also going to have a function which is going to happen every time we select an option. So we're just gonna say select option. And this is gonna take whichever option that we select because we need to know which option we're selecting. And lastly, we're gonna have a function which is going to allow us to display whichever option we're on. So we're just gonna say that we wanna show text node. And we can just come in here and this is going to take a particular index of a text node. So we're going to say text node index, just like that. Now with all those functions out of the way, let's make sure that we call start game as soon as our page loads. We can just do that at the very bottom of our script like this, and it's going to call this function as soon as everything is loaded. And in here, what we want to do is we want a state function, state variable here. We're just going to call it state. This is just going to be an equal to an empty object. This is where we're going to keep track of what our character has on them. For example, the goo in this previous example here. So when we start our game, we wanna take our state and make sure that this is an empty object. And we also just wanna show the next text node. So we can say show text node, and we wanna show the very first one. And these text nodes are gonna be defined down here in a variable, which is gonna be called text nodes. And inside of here, we're gonna have an object, which is gonna have an ID, for example, of one, which is going to be our very first text node. And we're also gonna have some text, just like this. This text we're gonna take from our previous example. I'll just paste it in here. It says you wake up in a strength place, and see a jar of blue glue near you. Now, from here, we're gonna have different options for what we can do. And these options are gonna actually have quite a lot of parameters. The main thing you notice is the actual text, which is gonna show up on our button here. So our two options are we can take the goo, and then we also wanna create another option, which is going to have the text of leave it. So we can just say leave the goo, just like that. So this is first gonna be the text for our two different options. But we also need to have an option which is going to set state for us, because if we take the goo, we need to set the state. So we can say we wanna set our state to have the goo, so blue goo is going to be true because our character now has blue goo. So this will set our state for us. And we also finally need an option which is gonna tell us what the next text node is. So in our case, we're just gonna go down to ID of number two, which we'll create down here. Let's just do that now, ID of two. And for now, we're just not gonna fill anything else out in there. We just know that, that our next text is going to be number two. For example, if we leave the glue, we're not gonna actually set any state. So we can ignore that and just set our next text, which is again going to be the same one, number two in our example. So now that we know how this text node information is working, let's work on implementing our show text node. This is just going to first get our text node, which is going to be equal to text nodes dot find. And this is going to take in a text node for each one in the array. And we wanna find the one that has the current ID. So we're gonna say text node dot ID is going to be equal to text node index, just like that. And this is going to be the current text node we want to show. And to show the text, the first thing we can do is set the inner text, whoops, inner text of our text element equal to that text node dot text. And if we save that, you see the text is being shown up right here. 
Now the next thing we need to do is remove all the options. We can just do this in a simple while loop. So we can say the option button element dot first child. So while it has a first child, we want to just remove that child. So we can say remove child of the option button element dot first child. Now if we save that, you see it removes all of our options. And now we can actually go around and adding the options that we need to. To do this, we're just going to loop through all of our options, which is going to be text node dot options. And we just want to do it for each over all these different options. And in here, the first thing we want to do is we want to check if we can actually show that node. So we can just say if show option, which is a function we're going to create. And if it, we pass in the option and if we can show it, we're going to execute the code inside of here. This is because as I showed earlier, sometimes we can show some options based on the state that we have up here. So let's just create that function now, show option. And for now, we're just going to actually return true from this every single time. So we're just going to say return true because we don't know how to implement this option function yet. So inside of here, now we actually need to create the option. So we're going to create a button, which is just going to be equal to document dot create element. Whoops, create element. And we want to make sure we create here a button. And then with that button, we want to first set the text of it, which is just going to be equal to our option dot text. And we also want to come in here and we want to set the class. So we're going to get the class list and we're going to add that button class. So it's going to be styled properly. And lastly, we need to set up a click event listener. So we're going to add this event listener for click onto here. And this is again, just going to take a single function just like this. And it's going to be our select option function. And it's going to pass in the option that we're currently selecting just like that. It'll call down here with that option we're on. And now let's add that to our option button element group. So we can just say append child and we want to append the button. Now, if we save that, you see it's showing up our two buttons down here. And if we click on it, it's obviously not going to work because we don't have anything for our second node that we're going to be adding on to. Let's add on and actually create this. So the first thing we need to do is add the text. I'm again just going to copy this over. This is just going to say you venture forth in search of answers to where you are when you come across a merchant. And in here, we're again going to have our options, which is in an array. And the very first option we want to do is we want to be able to trade with the person if we have the blue glue. So we're just going to say trade the goo for a sword, just like that. And this is going to actually require us to have goo in order for this option to show up. So we're going to need to be able to check the required state. So we're going to say required state. And this is actually going to take a function. And this function is going to pass in the current state that we have. So as you remember, we have this state variable up here. And this required state function is going to take in that current state. And it's going to check if we have what we need. So it's going to say if the current state dot blue goo. So essentially, if we have the blue goo, then this option is going to show up. And if we don't, it will not show up. And this is going to happen in our show option function here when we get ready to implement that. The next thing we want to do is we want to set the state. So in here, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have no blue goo. So we're going to say blue goo is going to be false since we got rid of it. But sword is going to be true since we just picked up a sword from him. And now we can say that the next text is just going to be number three here. So let's do that. Now we can copy this down because we're going to have another option, which is going to be trading for a shield. And in here, we're again going to have to have the blue goo. But instead of setting our sword to true, we're going to set a shield to true. And then lastly, what are we going to do if we don't have any goo? We can just set here that we want to ignore. So we can say ignore, whoops, ignore the merchant. There we go. And this is not going to require any state, so we can remove this. It's not going to set any state, but it is going to move us on to the next text in our array. Now with that out of the way, let's actually get our show option to be working properly. So what we need to do is we want to check first if we have a required state object. So if this is equal to null, which means we have no required state, then we want to return true. Or if option dot required state of our current state, which is just state. So if this returns true, or if we don't have any required state, then we're going to show the option. So this is going to work properly when we get to our second step. But in order to get to our second step, we need to implement our select option function. So in here, we want to get our next text node. So we can say next text node ID is going to be equal to option dot next text, just like this. And then we want to get our state. So we want to take our state and we're going to set it equal to object dot assign first our initial state and then the option dot set state. And what this does is it's going to take our state that we have currently. It's going to add everything from option set state to it and override anything that's already there. So if blue goo is true here, but it's false in our option set state, it's going to set it to false in our state. And this is going to return a brand new object, which we're going to set to our current state. Then after all that is done, we just want to show the text node for our next text node ID, just like that. And if we save that, 
and we click on here and we say take goo, you'll see we get all three of our different options. But if we refresh and we don't, you'll see we only get the one single option, so our state information is working properly. Now I'm going to copy in the next text node that we're going to have, which is our text node number three. So let me just paste that in here. And essentially all this is saying is that after we leave the merchant, we see both a town and a castle, and it gives us options based on what we want to do for all of these different things. So now let's implement what happens if we explore the castle, but our character is very tired. So we want this to end the game. So we're going to come down here. We're going to set an ID of five or of four, actually, because this is the next text of four. And the text for this, I'm just going to copy this over. And essentially it just says that you're tired while you're exploring the castle and the monster inside kills you when you fall asleep. So this is going to end our game. So we're just going to have one single option, which is going to restart the game for us. We're going to set the text equal to restart. And here we don't actually have a text node we can go to because we want to recall up here this start game function. So we reset our state. So what we want to do is we want to use a special next text, which is just going to be a negative one. And this is just going to signify to us we want to restart the game. So let's make sure we check for that up here inside of our function for selecting an option. What we want to do is if our next text node ID is less than or equal to zero, so essentially it's negative one or below, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What we want to do is we just want to call start game. So we're just going to return here, start game, just like that. And that's actually going to restart the game for us. So let's go through here, get to that step. And if we click explore the castle, you're going to see that it says you're so tired, you fall asleep. So we restart and it's going to reset our state and everything for us. Now, so you don't have to watch me type out all of the different text nodes that we're going to have. I'm just going to copy in the fully complete game here and we're going to scroll back up to the top, save it and walk through it. So let's just say you wake up in a strange place and you see a jar of blue goo. So we're going to take the goo and we see a merchant. So let's trade that goo for a sword because we might actually want to use that. And it says, after leaving the merchant, you feel tired. We stumble upon a town and a dangerous looking castle. We already know the castle option is bad. So let's say that we want to find a room to sleep in at the town. And you see that without any money to buy the room, we get thrown in jail for trying to break into a room. So we have to restart. And if you want to play through this game, make sure to go to my GitHub, pull it down. It has the entire game code in it for you to play around with. And you just created your very first game. I really want you to expand upon this and show me what you can create. So when you do create a game, tweet me at devsimplified with a link to your game so I can check it out. Also, if you want more videos of me simplifying the web, make sure to check them out linked over here and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.